Welcome everyone, Kostini here with Harry Potter, uh, the video games on PC, the first three games, the ones that are actually worth playing, because the other ones have quite a few issues in terms of their design. But the first three games can be a great deal of fun. They're puzzle adventure games, you do have platforming, you do have puzzles, you do have classes, they're pretty fun games. But you can't purchase them anywhere, and even if you get your hands on a copy, even getting them to run can be an issue on a modern system, but I'll be going over the kind of fixes you need to install if you want to get these games running on a modern system. Like this is on Windows 11 that I am uh, playing here, Prisoner of Azkaban. I've gotten all free games to run. And I'll try and show all of these games in uh, this video, though it can be a bit, ish a bit of an issue t for me to record footage from all of these games. But anyway, I'm just going to close Prisoner of Azkaban and I'm going to go over the various fixes that you need to install in order to get these, uh, these games uh, running on a modern uh, system. So... What you want to do once you've installed the game, you don't want to start it. If once you've installed the game, you want to go to the PC Gaming Wiki page for each of these games. This is for the Sorcerer's Stone, this is for Chamber of Secrets, and this is for Prisoner of Azkaban. And you want to go over at least some of the fixes in order to get these games running. So, for uh, Chamber of Secrets, what you want to do is install the unofficial widescreen patch. Now the reason you want to install this is so you have everything properly scaled and then you need to set the resolution. If you want to set it to 16 by 9 or 16 by 10 beyond the 4 by 3 which are the default resolutions for the game. There is, is a utility available. They, there's a link uh, in the PC Gaming Wiki article on this. You download this. Uh, you don't put it on your desktop, put it in a folder. You start it. Once you've started a game it will detect each of the game and then you can uh, choose some options like run and window, debug mode, hardware acceleration. But what you really are interested here, like I always keep hardware acceleration on for the first two games, it runs just fine. Uh, but what you're interested here is 40, uh, the resolution. I've set it to 12, uh, to, uh, to uh, 2560 uh, by 1440. Uh, in both full screen and windowed mode and the field of view, the FOV, I've set it to uh, 106.27 for 16 by 9. You have a 16 by 10, you have a 4 by 3 FOV available. Now what's important to know about this tool, the way it works is it edits your any files, which is something that um, uh, that PC Gaming Wiki goes into detail about v pretty much all, many of these fixes in terms of getting them to work. But here's the thing about the utility. The utility will save, it will change your any file, but it will also set it to read only. So if you're trying to change your any file after that, you need to set that off. Just something for to be aware. The tool works quite well. It does its job. Just one aspect to be aware. So you want to install the unofficial widescreen patch. Okay. And then the DirectX 11 renderer. Now, getting this renderer uh, to uh, to work, getting this particular renderer to work, does require some effort, does require some things to install, but it looks gorgeous. And on top of that, you also have an upscale patch for the first game that sets uh, the textures in 4K. So you can get the game looking amazing on uh, in this day and age, uh, certainly with upscale uh, textures, uh, at 4K resolution, 4K textures, 4K game will look pretty great. You can set the resolution to 4K, I believe. I haven't gone higher than 1440p, and it certainly looks a lot nicer. So those are the things. Those are two of the things you want to install. The most important one, though, for first game, the widescreen fix and the DirectX 11 render and all that will improve things. But the one thing you really want to install is the proper mouse look and strafing. Basically, this will improve the controls of the first game by a fairly substantial amount. For those of us that played the first game on PC when it came out, we remember how horrible it was to draw the symbols in lessons and how horrible it was to fly. With this fix, the first game will run quite well. So you install these fixes 
and it will run quite well. If you have issues getting into run, I didn't have any issues, but yeah, just follow all of these, um, all of these um, tips and it will work uh, quite well. There can be some sound issues, by the way, when it comes to the game, but, uh, and I've certainly encountered them, though I didn't use this particular fix to get the sound issues uh, running. Now, here's what I will mention about the first game before moving on to the second. When it comes to the first game, and I'm just going to start uh, try putting it up, but when it comes to the first game, the problem you're going to encounter when you're trying to uh, to play it, the problem you're going to encounter, even with all these fixes beyond audio issues, which do exist, maybe there's a solution with that. But the one issue you are uh, certainly going to encounter is uh, is the following. Your settings won't be saved, especially if you start and restart the game. So for instance here, every time I start the game, I have to set my forward, backwards, left, right, W, S, and D. Uh, keys, I use Z and C for flying and that's all I need to change and then I have to change the volume sliders uh, quite often because it won't save that. Another aspect by the way is with the mouse. Uh, pretty significant if you're flying, also significant when you're going in lessons because you might have issues with the mouse sensitivity. The mouse sensitivity by default in this game uh, is pretty terrible let's be honest with uh with uh let's be honest about this so you want to set this low when you're going in lessons and you may have to set them multiple times like every time you start a lesson you may want to just hit escape go to this menu and get it to run by the way this is how the main menu looks in 4K, 4K textures. Now, sure, there are black bars because this was designed for 4x3 and the image is 4x3, so there is no widescreen fix. The game, however, runs, um, if I just load this, this is at the end. This is how the game looks. Like This is like a bonus cinematic at the very end of the game uh, <laughs> involving our favorite character, Snape, and it looks pretty sweet, doesn't it? Okay, uh, so that that's... Uh, that's how you get the first uh, game uh, to run. Now, what about Chamber of Secrets? I actually had the most uh, issues with Chamber of Secrets, but maybe you won't. Uh, one thing I will advise people to do with all of these games is not put them in the program files. Like the default setup folder is going to be in your program files folder. When I tried to do that, I was like, okay, it's an old game. What does it matter? I have an SSD. It's like, why, where does, why does it matter if I put in program files? But it ran far worse. Like, it was loading far worse. And then when I switched folders it, into, like, where I usually put most of my games, uh, it ran just fine. But anyway, going into the second game. So there's a Coca-Cola pro promotion CD-ROM, interesting, with a secret level. I'm not quite certain about how you get access to this, but I guess it's uh, worth uh, checking out. I've never done it personally, and I've been able to unlock pretty much everything in the game. But anyway, um, when we're looking at widescreen resolution, you can use the utility I've mentioned before. Uh, you do want to get the widescreen mode installed. Uh, go to configuration, find uh, the game, any, all that kind of stuff. Now, when we're thinking about widescreen, right, one of the things to bring up is although the game with the widescreen uh, uh, utility here will run just fine in 1440p or 1080 or 4K, the one issue it has is the menu. So what, what do I mean by that? The menu, the, this menu here, the in-game options menu, which you can see here, uh, won't be scaled well. So it will, be out of, uh, it will be out of bounds. Now, how do you fix that? Well, for that, you have to go to the game pressure and you download this widescreen menu mod and you install it. It won't be perfect because the menu is scaled for four by three. So what the mod creator has done, he's put it to one side on the left side. It won't be perfect, but at least you will have access to all the information in the menu. And I'll actually demonstrate this, how how this uh, whole thing works by starting the game. Then you have the DirectX 11, uh, 11 renderer available, 
with an upscale patch i didn't use it personally though you can i would recommend you try it out at the very least so you do have an upscale patch for both the first game and the second game i didn't play with directx 11 i played with directx 9 though i might replay this game with directx 11 it's actually the best game in the series and you install that you don't have control issues though you might have menu scalability issues uh, but oddly enough for me the second game was the one that was the hardest uh, to get going when I was initially installing it. Though that might have been just purely because of the fact that it was the first of these three games that I uh, I installed uh, recently. I'm just starting a new game here. I'm gonna be skipping some cinematics. I just want to show the menus for you guys, how they look, how things actually are uh, in the game. So uh, welcome to Chamber of Secrets. Still looks pretty good. Obviously, it's not 4K textures, but still looks pretty good. I mean, you won't necessarily notice the biggest difference in terms of texture the quality because they're just the same textures upscaled. And this is how the menu looks. The text here at the bottom, obviously, it's not centered here with the card, but at least you get all the information for the sounds, for the inputs, for that. This game, in quite a lot of ways, doesn't require as much customization as the first or third game, but you may have the same uh, same issues that I did. And I did encounter a lot of those issues when I installed it in program files. When I did switch the folders, reinstalled it, fewer issues. But yeah, this is how uh, the second game lo looks, by the way. I didn't change any of the binds, to be clear. These are the default binds, I move, I, I aim, all that. Uh, I'd say the second game is actually the best in the series um, in terms of how well it runs on a modern system. Like I'd say the third game is more technically advanced, but it certainly had more bugs and glitches. Because this game is built on the first one, and so they were able to improve on pretty much every aspect of the first one. Though I'd say the first one does certainly have its own charm. So anyway, uh, just gonna quit the game over there. And then finally, to, uh, to Prisoner of Azkaban, again, PC Gaming Wiki. Now, the third game has some issues. Uh, like, it might be the game that you can install the easiest and get to run the easiest, but it does certainly have some issues. You use the same, uh, the only thing you really need to do is use the, this utility, Harry Potter settings, set the resolution. If you want to do more uh, in terms of mouse sensitivity and so on, you can do so. Uh, but you may encounter a number of bugs. So the frozen imp bugs or the secret portraits not opening or other issues. Now, how do you fix that? So the game for the most part runs well, but it does have issues with the frozen imp. It does have issues with portraits. And, and how do you fix that? Well, what you want to do is you want to download something, the... Uh, DG Voodoo 2 wrapper. Now the link here doesn't work, but there is, you just Google it and it's actually on their site. You download this, the two, uh, 277 version. You download the file, okay. Once, um, once the file is downloaded, you open it. And what you want to get from this zip file, you go to x86, and no, actually, let me just go. So this would be uh, how it looks. You go to MS, x86, and you get this file. You take this file, you put it in your game folder, and you will no longer have issues with the frozen imp or portraits not, uh, not uh, opening. I actually did a full run of Prisoner of Azkaban and I didn't have any issues. And then I did a second run and I suddenly did have issues. It is weird. It is just really bizarre sometimes with these very old games. But yeah, the third game really only needs a resolution change and you can change that yourself through the any file. Uh, and otherwise it will run just, just fine on its own. Okay. But yeah, this is... Like these kind of portraits can bug out or them can bug Isn't out. Tight. Now you can see the uh, the Voodoo logo there. I'm sure there might be some way uh, to to remove it, but honestly, that's not really the most annoying aspect here. Like I can live with that as Isn't long as the game run uh, runs just fine, oh. and it does, right? It's like it, it does. Though it does have some issues with like aiming spells, or for instance, me trying to use Rick to Sempra to 
throw this crab back. Like, there's some issues with respect to that. It's not perfect. Um, and I actually say that I like the third game the least. Like, I really like the first and second game a lot more than this one. Though this one is probably the easiest to do back-to-back -back playthroughs of. Like, I just did back-to-back -back playthroughs of this game. Like, I finished the main story in this particular one. But yeah, there are some uh, <laughs> technical issues between Harry and the Fire Crab right there. Right, some, some technical issues between Harry and the Fire Crab. And that's...